Hey Lifehouse, Richard here from Hong Kong, and we've been in a series all about overcoming, and I believe you are overcomers in Christ. And today's message, I want to be sharing about how we can thrive in the face of opposition. When people are putting pressure on us, society is putting pressure on us to do things that are maybe not in God's best for us, I believe we can thrive with the power of God. So why don't we pray and then let's get into the message. Lord, we thank you that you that you speak to us. We thank you that you're with us. Holy Spirit, that you're you, you're, you come alongside us and that you lead us forward. And I pray that we would be people that stand firm, Lord, when there's pressure, when there's opposition. We would be people of strength, your strength, Jesus. We lean into that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, we're all going to face opposition in life. And I know Pastor Rod, our senior pastor, has a cool story of when he was in sales a long time ago before he was pastoring. He had a sales job. And there was a moment where I think there was a bit of pressure at work for him to maybe lie to a customer. And I don't know if any of you have ever been in this situation where someone in the office is putting pressure on you to tell a lie to a customer or a supplier or something like that. Well, Pastor Rod found himself in this kind of a situation and he he says, look, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be truthful and I believe that there's going to be a great result. And I, I think in the end, he ended up losing that sale. But that customer who he had told the truth to came back because they trusted him and put in one of the biggest orders that his company had ever had before. What a great story of facing opposition and then, then doing the right thing. The only thing is, I had a story that was very similar as well. And in fact, when I was, uh, I had graduated from university, I got a job in sales and I was out there doing my best in sales. I was bad at it. I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, there was a one point where my boss said to me, just lie, just, just tell a lie. It was the exact same kind of situation as Pastor Rod's. And I had decided as well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, uh, I'm a Christian. Uh, it's wrong. I'm not going to lie to this customer. And within two months, I had lost my job. <laughs> so not the happy ending that Pastor Rod had, although you could say it's a happy ending because I ended up moving to Asia. God changed my life through that, through Lifehouse Church, met my wife here. Everything's changed. So there was a happy ending. But I too face opposition in the workplace. And I have found that we're all going to have these moments where there's pressure on us to do something that is not of God. And I believe God can help us to thrive in these kind of situations, whether it ends up in the outcome we want or in some other outcome. Now, we're going to look at the story of David. Okay, David, King David, amazing king, one of Israel's greatest kings, and his most famous story of the battle uh, between him and Goliath. Okay, but we're going to look at the lead up to the story of this battle because we find that David came up against some opposition. Now, in this culture, in the Jewish culture, the family unit was very strong. Okay, so, you know, respecting elders and older brothers and things like that. There, there, was a, there was a certain hierarchy in every family. And David was one of the youngest of many brothers. And unfortunately for him, his, his father had kind of overlooked him in many ways. And his brothers kind of looked down on him. And he would spend his time taking care of the sheep. That was kind of what the young people did. It was a, you know, like a low level job. And yet David kept a pure heart because of his amazing relationship with God. And I imagine him out there with the sheep. He was a musician. He probably had his little harp guitar or something like that and worshiping on the, on, on the hills and the fields, singing to those sheep and praising G Jesus. And, and he, there would have been a joy in David's heart. We see that kind of a vibe from David. He had a genuine relationship with God this young man. And even though there was a, a, a complicated family situation, 
his relationship with God was very uncomplicated. It was, it was something that he really got strength from. And it, we come to this moment where David is actually sent to the battlefield in order to deliver some food. His older brothers are in the battle. The Israelite army is lined up. They're lined up against the Philistines. The Philistines are coming out each day. And their champion, his name is Goliath, a huge guy. You know, just many feet, nine feet or something tall. I don't know, he was huge, right? Bigger than the biggest NBA player would come out every day and just taunt the Israelites and defy God. And, and David heard this and he's like, what is going on? Who is this guy? Listen to the way that he talks about our God. And it says that David's brother confronts David in 1 Samuel 17, verse 28 to 29. It says, when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here? Anyway, he demanded. What about these, those few sheep that you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and your deceit. You just want to see the battle. This is not a very encouraging thing to hear from your oldest brother. David was coming from a place of a pure heart. He did not like how this guy was speaking about God. He did not like how he was insulting the people of Israel. And yet his own family member, his own oldest brother, criticized and actually attacked his own heart. And we can see that this is kind of consistent with the way that David was being treated by his family. Maybe they, maybe they saw him worshiping and they thought, oh, you're just trying to be super spiritual. And they thought there was an arrogance around him when really it was just a God confidence. David knew who he was. And we see that essentially from what Eliab is saying is, go home, David. Why are you here? Go back to your, your small little job with the sheep. Go home. And yet what God was doing was actually lining up a story that would end up shaping the whole of David's life, this battle with Goliath. God wanted him here, yet his own brother was trying to send him home. And what we find is that this opposition that David was facing came from his own inner circle. And I want to tell you that at some point in your life, you're going to face some opposition from people in your inner circle. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a cousin. Maybe it's a brother. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's someone in the office. But it's someone that you know well. Maybe it's someone that you love and respect. But at some point, you're going to face some opposition to the things of God in your life. Now, whether that's from a good heart or a bad heart that can come, sometimes people give bad advice from a good heart, but it's at eventually, I'm telling you, it's going to come. And even recently, I had a conversation with a great young guy who was having some struggles in his family life. And he, he's a generous guy. He would often uh, give finances to his family and help them out financially. And yet, when they found out that he was also tithing, his family was upset at him that he was giving money to the church. And there became an argument, there became, uh, you know, a negative discussion around this. And even though he was generous towards them, they didn't like that he tithed. And I think that's pretty common, guys. Maybe someone has said to you, oh, it's okay to go to church. It's okay to be a Christian, but just don't give them any money. Or it's okay to go to church, but just, uh, just don't get baptized because then you'll have to stop doing all your sin. That's so fun. Maybe they're saying, oh... You always, you always used to hang out with us and now you're at church on Sundays and you're, you're, you're giving more time to the church and maybe they're putting a bit of kind of guilt. Maybe it's a subtle thing or maybe it's more direct. I've had moments where I think people have tried to make me feel a bit guilty for something I was, I was doing here in Hong Kong. Maybe they might say, oh, you, you used to come to Yum Cha with us on, on, on Sundays and now you're always at church. Maybe it's just a little bit of guilt there that they would slide in or... Or maybe it's full-on confrontation where it's just, this is wrong and you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be raising your kids like this. You shouldn't be having those kind of priorities in your marriage. You should be spending your money like this and you should be spending your time like this and you should be out here partying with us. Maybe it's a full-on confrontation. I know of someone who lost their family inheritance because they followed Jesus. There was pressure financially to say, no to the things of God so that they could get their inheritance and yet they still chose to follow Jesus. 
How will you respond when you face opposition? We're all going to feel it, but God is with us in this moment. And even when it comes from our inner circle, just like David from his own brother, from his own family. And David ignores his brother. He doesn't get into an argument with him. He just moves on and he's asking around the other soldiers because he hears that King Saul has put out a reward. If you kill Goliath, you get an incredible king's reward. And David wants to know more. And so he's asking around. And then word of that comes back to King Saul. And King Saul invites David to come and talk to him. And David says, I want to I wanna fight this guy. How dare he speak this way about our God? And King Saul says this to him in verse 33. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy and he's been a man of war since his youth. Well, this is kind of no exaggeration. David was a boy. He was young. But, uh, and, and this guy was a giant. He was a, he was a seasoned warrior. Man, it's so hard to face opposition when it's from someone that's high level, you know, this was the king. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have access to anyone that high level in my life, but when it's a, a figure of authority, maybe a parent, maybe a teacher, maybe a boss, and they're opposing the things of God in my life, that, that can be tough. But David spoke confidently from a healthy heart back to King Saul. And he says this in verse 37, the Lord who rescued me From the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. What confidence. And Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said. And may the Lord be with you. I I can almost imagine King Saul saying that sarcastically. Like basically, all right, go ahead, mate. You know, this is on you now. Uh, You know, you're going to have to deal with with the repercussions of this, David. But David stood firm in his faith. He stood firm when faced with this opposition. And Saul agrees to let him go. But Saul says to him, hey, mate, David. I don't know if he said, hey, mate, but (laughs) I don't know if it was in Australia. Hey, mate. Hey, mate, David, you need to wear some armor. You need to wear what everyone else wears when they go to battle. You need to be doing what everyone else is doing. And this comes to another type of opposition and pressure that we face in life. Pressure from our culture to do what everyone else is doing. Pressure to conform. Oh, everyone does this. I remember in university and in my high school years, I was a, I was a believer. I loved God and I, I, and I heard at church that we were supposed to say, stay sexually pure until we were married, that we should only sleep with our, our, our husband or wife. And I had made a personal decision. I'm going to keep my purity. And yet my, my friends and my peer group all around me were very active sexually and they're telling their stories and whatever and going out to parties and, and, and just going down a path that I didn't want to go down. And there were times where maybe they would make fun of me and they were still my friends, but you know, we're Australians, we make fun of each other, that's how it works. But I would have to kind of stand firm against what was common in the culture that I was in at the time and it wasn't easy. And David has this moment where they're trying to make him wear the same thing that everyone else is wearing. David, you're going into battle. You need to wear some armor. Verse 38, and Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what it was like. For he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these. He protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. And so David took them off again. He didn't do what everyone else was doing. He decided, this is, this, is, this is not right for me. And there are moments in your life where you've got to make that decision. Just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean it's right for me. Doesn't mean that this is God's best for me. Maybe it's what you're putting on, on social media. Maybe it's how you're spending your weekends. Maybe it's uh, how you're spending Sunday. Do you make time for the house of God? I, do you make space in your, in your finances to tithe? Do you, are you obedient to Jesus when He speaks to you? Or are you subject to the pressure, to coming under the pressure of your culture? David said no, and he stood firm. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 45, David's, 
goes to battle with Goliath and Goliath is insulting him, is, an insu- is insulting his God. And it says that, that David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And it's so interesting that David says, you come to me with weapons, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. In other words, David made it spiritual. In fact, he knew that this this opposition he was facing was not just a physical battle, it was actually a spiritual battle. And I wanna tell you that your opposition that you're facing in your life is spiritual too. Your opposition is not with a person, your opposition is in the spiritual world. And so the answer is also spiritual as well. In Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12, says this amazing verse, it says, finally, Let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. So our strength is from the Lord. It's not our own strength when we're under opposition. We are not fighting against humans. We are fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. Now, David was physically fighting a human, but he knew it was bigger than that. This opposition is spiritual. And I want to tell you, your opposition is not your mom. (laughs) Your opposition is not your dad. Your opposition is not your brother, your sister, your colleague, your friend. It's not even the opposition to your culture. Yes, maybe it's coming through that, but the opposition is spiritual. There is a real enemy out there and he's trying to put pressure on you to not do the things of God, to not follow through with the call of God that's on your life. And we need to get strength from the Lord. And that's what David did. You know, David was a young man who grew up praising God, worshiping on those hills. There was joy in his heart, even though he had family problems and he wasn't treated very well. There was a joy about David. And in Nehemiah, it actually says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. David had a strength in his joy. And I want to tell you that Christians, we're not just, we're not strong and miserable. (laughs) We're strong because we're joyful. We have the joy of the Lord. His strength is in our hearts. And so we can come under any kind of pressure and we're not going to break. Any kind of opposition and we can stand firm. Because when we came to Jesus, when we gave our life to Him, when He died on the cross and rose again for us, yes, it was for our salvation. Yes, it was for our forgiveness. Yes, it was for heaven. But it was also for our strength. And the Holy Spirit is with you and He's in you and He wants to strengthen you in a time of opposition so that you can stand firm and you don't have to be rude to people. Your battle is not with those people. Your battle is against sin. Your battle is against the enemy. And God has strength for you. And Philippians 4 verse 13 says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. It's not my own strength. Oh, praise God. It's not in our own strength, right? Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. It's not in the strength of Richard. You know, and I think I look back at my teenage years and I kind of can't believe that I didn't give in to the social pressure that was so normal in my public high school. I, I, I look back, it's, it's like a miracle, and I, I, I can't say it any other way than, the, than God gave me strength in those times. It wasn't because I was strong, I was weak, I felt the pressure, I felt silly, I felt like I was being made fun of, and yet God made me strong. I love that scripture, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And just recently we had Pastor Rod here in Hong Kong with us and he was sharing with our church. And I love what he said. He said, you know, after all these years of following Jesus, I still need the strength of Jesus every day. I still rely on his strength. And that doesn't mean that we're Weak, I think it takes strength to actually admit that you're weak, if that makes sense. But he's saying, we don't graduate. We don't get to a point where we're so mature and we don't need the strength of Jesus. No, 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 no. 
We need his strength every day and praise God, the Holy Spirit is in us, he's with us and we can lean into our journaling and draw strength from God's word and we can lean into our prayer life and, and speak to God and be encouraged by him and we can lean into worship, we can lean into praise, we can lean into the community of believers, your local church that is around you, that's, you know, there to help make you strong. That's part of the reason we do church. We're weak when we're isolated. We're strong together. David was a praiser. He had this joy in his heart and so he was strong. And I want to encourage you to lean into the things of God. And I want to wrap up this message by giving you a couple of key applications that I see from this, uh, from this story. Number one, everyone experiences opposition which means my situation is not special because everyone goes through pressure. Everyone experiences opposition. In fact, in 1 Peter 5 verse 9, it says, Refuse to follow the devil. Stand strong in your faith. You know that your brothers and sisters all over the world are having the same sufferings that you have. (laughs) the same sufferings. We all go through the same stuff. It may look a little bit different, but I tell you throughout history, there have been millions and millions of believers who are experiencing the same kind of opposition as you are experiencing. Opposition from your family circle, opposition and pressure from your culture to do certain things. It's the same sufferings and Jesus experienced it too right? Think of all the pressure that Jesus went through. In fact, in fact, a well-meaning John the Baptist tried to talk Jesus out of getting baptized. So sometimes even good people who love us can say the wrong kind of thing and pressure us in the wrong direction. We all go through the same sufferings. And I think the danger is when we start thinking that my situation is special. My situation is unique. And so it has exceptions. I want to I want to encourage you with this. You are special, but your situation is not special. <laughs> it's common to man, the same sufferings. You're special, but your situation is not special. And that means that other people have overcome, and so you too can be an overcomer. You too can get through this. You too can stand strong in your faith. You too can refuse to follow the devil. You can do what God wants you to do. And I think about a great example of this uh, in my church here in Hong Kong. We've got Pastor David and Kat, just some great friends of mine. I've, I've known them for 13 plus years. And I've seen how they've modeled a faithfulness to the Lord in their family. And here in, in, in Hong Kong, you know, family is a big value that people have. Our family family cultures in the Chinese world is pretty strong and I know that David and Kat do an awesome job of taking care of their family and uh, you know are there for family events and all of this kind of stuff and they really love their family but I've also seen them really honor the time of church every Sunday morning and they're always there unless they're sick or you know traveling overseas they are in the house of God and they've always brought their kids along to church yeah, what, they didn't let their kids choose whether they go to church or not. They brought their family to church. And I have seen them thrive as a family. I've seen their kids grow up into teenagers and now young adults who love the Lord. I've seen uh, them be blessed in their businesses. I've seen them grow in their leadership, in their life purpose. I've seen them thrive. And yet I know that behind the scenes, there were probably times where there was a bit of family pressure for them to be at certain things on a Sunday morning because it's common to everyone. Everyone goes through this. And yet I've seen other, t- other people who maybe have thought that their situation was, was special and are often giving reasons why they can't be there at church. And I understand that there's legitimate reasons. I, I get that. But you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about fighting for your time at church. We have to stand strong to be in the house of God. And we still love our families. We still take care of our families. But oftentimes you can sometimes see people giving that family thing as as like like it's something special, like it's something unique that they're, oh, my situation is so special. And so therefore I can't do blah, 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 blah. 
hey, come on, let's be like David and Kat. Let's be someone who lives on principle and who, who understands that opposition is common to everyone. We're all going to go through this, and instead I'm going to be an overcomer. Come on. Number two, I want to encourage you to prioritize God's approval over people's. And it says in Galatians 1 verse 10, now, I, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God's? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And sometimes being a follower of Jesus means we may have to disagree with someone. We may have to do something different than what they want. We may have to stand firm when they put pressure on us to live a certain way. Because God is first, we serve Jesus. That's the overcoming life. That's when Jesus will give you his strength. When you're serving him, when you're following him, that's when he'll give you the the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to stand strong and make great decisions that are going to build your life, that are going to build your family's life and is going to lead you towards your purpose. I serve Jesus. I'm a servant of Jesus. I don't serve these people. I love these people. Let, let me get it clear. I want to speak to them with grace, but I serve Jesus. I want to encourage you to make that decision to prioritize God's approval over people's. No matter how much they make you feel guilty, no matter how much they put expectation on you, no, we smile, we graciously reply, but we serve Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, my friends out here, I'm sure there's many people in in situations of opposition, maybe at work, maybe at home, in their families, Lord. It's a part of life. We understand that it's hard, but Lord, we thank you for your strength. Jesus, we lean into your strength. Holy Spirit, your joy. We thank you that we can joyfully move through this life. Even though there's pressures all around us, Lord, we're going to keep making decisions that glorify you. And I pray for strength for every single person that hears my voice. Lord, the strength of the Holy Spirit as they stand firm in their faith. Touch them, Lord. Fill them with your power. And Lord, we pray that great fruit and blessings will come from these decisions to stand firm for you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to pray for one other group of people because there are people right now listening to me, whether you're in a church service or you're watching on YouTube or somewhere else, you know right now that you need to get your life right with Jesus. He died on a cross and rose again for you. And yes, He offers you strength when you face opposition, but He also offers you forgiveness for your sin. He's forgiven me, He's changed my life, and He wants to do the same for you. So we've put a a prayer up on the screen. Why don't you pray this prayer out loud or just in your heart with me as you say yes to Jesus. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Amen. Amen. Come on, we're praising God for you. You're an overcomer, and I'm excited to be able to share God's word with you today. I hope it gets in your heart.